Hey guys, welcome back to Recording RS Explained. This is video five, entitled, Finished, Now What? Um, decided to take it out of the studio. I just couldn't get the lighting right. So uh, this is actually where I come to meditate in the morning. This exact spot is just down the street from my house. So um, hope you're enjoying the scenery. <clears throat> so now that you've decided what out of your uh, hopefully a handful of songs is the strongest one with the, you know, Hopefully it's the catchiest one, the most interesting one. Um, it could even be the most daring one if you want to put out like a buzz single or something. Now that you've figured out what your single is going to be, it's time to figure out your rollout strategy. Your rollout strategy is the plan you come up with as far as how to release the music. The strategy will vary from artist to artist and it's kind of, at this point, I mean, you know, we brought up Trump and Kanye and we're going to talk about Takashi 69 in a little bit. Hopefully you know who he is. Uh, we're kind of in the age of shameless promotion. So it's kind of, you know, what is your threshold for how shamelessly you can put yourself out there? I mean, some people have a high tolerance and some people have a low tolerance. And that's, that's for you to decide. Um, but basically, marketing is one of the most complex parts of the process. Um, and you kind of don't you kind of don't know what'll work until you try it. So there isn't really like a, a hard and fast way of how to do this, unfortunately. But, um, you know, uh, there are a few different ways, obviously. Like uh, one example is this rapper named Lil Baby. He, you know, he's always doing the collabs and taking the clout photos and, you know, he markets himself by association. Whereas uh, Takashi 69 he's, I mean, I don't know if it's an insult to call him a clown. I mean, he kind of tries to look like a clown. Anyway, so he's, he's a clown and, you know, he just does things that are crazy that, you you know, you just want to tune in next to see the next the next bullshit that this dude did. So, um, and that's how he markets himself. And obviously both of these dudes are, are winning. So um, really it's just about getting yourself out there. That's the most important thing. If you're more of a traditional artist in this way, you might want to hire a PR firm that that understands you as an artist and will kind of steer you in a direction that might work for you. Again, none of this is guaranteed. Just because you uh, put a bunch of money down at a, a PR firm, that doesn't mean they're gonna work. I mean, that doesn't mean what they're gonna do is gonna work. You know, you have just as much of a chance to market yourself. Like, they're probably gonna use the same tools. You know, they're gonna do uh, social media blasts. You know, it, they just know more people than you, but they're gonna do the same kinds of things, most likely. There are plenty of strategies to try, such as keyword marketing ads and influencer marketing. Obviously, social media is an incredible tool to promote yourself on. Uh, it's a great way to let your fans know what's coming up for you, what you're working on, so that they can be anticipating new music from you. It's, it's not, you know, a shock. Obviously, when you're a really big artist like Beyonce, you can shock people by just dropping an album and that'll, you know, it's obviously pretty cool when she does that, but, you know, if you're just kind of starting out, like, who are you shocking? <laughs> but, um, you know, th there are some, some really cool techniques that I've been seeing, though. Like, for instance, recently, uh, Kodak Black, he was in the studio um, making that song that, that he has out right now called ZZ. And he put this out a few months ago, and it was just like him kind of dancing to the beat of the song. And uh, that, him just doing this little dance, this little jig, whatever, went viral and people started making memes about it so months before the single actually dropped there were hundreds of memes about it so when the song came out it went straight to number two on billboard whether you like the hip-hop that's out right now whether you think these guys are knuckleheads uh they are geniuses at marketing um you know Lil pump uh it was either Lil pump or takashi i think it was Lil pump they had this whole marketing thing about fuck j cole and which is interesting because J. Cole, like I've met J. Cole, he's a super cool guy. Um, he's kind of one of those guys where if you said, fuck this person, you have to have a reason why. I mean, he's just like known as a cool, good dude. So, and, and they, uh, Lil Pump just kind of ran with that. And eventually it's like, well, why is this dude saying this? And, you know, the, these are the kind of guerrilla tactics that are, are winning at this point. So again, it's kind of how shameless, how shameless are you willing to be? But as far as your marketing, just like your music has to ring true and people have to, you know, 
hear your lyrics and the music behind it and the way you look and, and think like, wow, I can see that person making that kind of sound, uh, writing about these sort of things and dressing in these clothes and dancing this way, your, your marketing sh has to ring true as well, you know? Um, the, the viewer has to think like, wow, I could see that artist doing that, you know? Like the way that Taylor Swift markets herself is gonna be very different than the way Drake markets himself. Although maybe not all that different. Uh, okay, fine, Kanye West. It's, good. it's definitely gonna be different than Kanye West. So, so yeah, your social media should ring just as true to the viewer as your music rings true to the listeners. Everything about being an artist is about the truth. Always remember that. Your first release is tough because you're trying to get your audience to buy into you. Uh, obviously, the low-hanging fruit is just to put a little post on your socials, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat about your song, but that's that's the low hanging fruit I mean you have to really think you have to go deeper than that at this point um, and, I'm, and I'm not saying don't do those things but that's kind of that's the start of it you got to do you got to do more one amazing resource that I see people using and maybe this isn't a specific genre this is more in like the EDM -y, kind of sound cloudy experimental stuff but one, one really cool resource is uh, submit hub they have a thing where you buy credits, say you buy 50 credits, and each credit um, equals a listen. And basically, you'll have your song, and say you buy your 50 credits, as I said, they'll send out your song to 50 different blogs um, and or 50 different record labels. And basically, each blog or record label has to listen to at least 20 seconds of your song for the credit to be used. And if they like it, then they'll put it on their blog or um, you know, playlist and what have you. And if they don't, they have to actually tell you why they didn't like it. Um, so that can be informative if you like the advice you're getting, um, or you could take it for what it is because it's a dude on a blog and it's not an artist. So I don't know, it's, uh, it's kind of interesting. You know, like a lot of the people on these playlists and blogs are pretty stuck up and you know, they know that they're powerful and kind of like, kind of like a movie critic who just shits all over a movie and they've never made a movie before. So I don't know, you can win at that, but um, you can also not, and I wouldn't get so bent out of shape about it. So, but that, that is a very cool resource. There's a lot of things like that. Uh, as you know, streaming is where it's at these days. Everybody is streaming way more and buying way less music. Playlists are the best way to get streaming traction, uh, but you really do need relationships to facilitate that. Um, and if you don't have relationships, then, you know, do some influencer marketing, do some social media stuff, maybe have, have a video that catches the attention of people, you know, some, some kind of leverage to get you onto the playlist. I'd recommend before getting into business with a digital PR person to get on these playlists, um, I'd recommend having some traction at first because these playlists want to know that you're bringing an audience to their playlist, you know, as, as well as obviously utilizing theirs. So they don't want to just bring some no-name onto their playlist. They're, they're trying to increase the, uh, the listeners that they have as well. So you want to be coming with some leverage. Also, if you have the delusions of grandeur that you're going to just walk onto New Music Friday or Rap Caviar, any of the huge playlists, that's probably not going to happen. Um, they have like a feeder playlist, like, uh, what's one? What do I have down here? Oh, like most necessary would be like a pretty pretty popular um, hip-hop feeder playlist um, and basically these are kind of like testing grounds to see um, how your song is performing and these feeder playlists can be looked at as a tryout period of sorts they're uh, they're taking note of skip rate completion rate and the number of saves that your song gets and once you hit certain metrics with those numbers, then they'll start moving you up to other playlists. But they're not really gonna take, they're not really gonna take a shot, sorry about the traffic guys, they're not really gonna take a shot on an unknown artist going to like a huge playlist because all of those spots in the playlist are very valuable. You know, this, this is the new radio, so they need to know that every single spot that they have on these big playlists is, you know, has a ton of listens, like it's, you know, because they don't want people to 
be listening to the playlist and then some wax song comes on and then they leave the playlist, you know, because they, they're recording that as well. So, um, yeah, so these feeder ones are kind of the tryout and once you graduate from that, you can go to better and better playlists. One thing that's very interesting is if you start researching about social media, there's ways to feed the algorithms, um, such as I have a friend who's a barber and he's really grown his social media uh, to a pretty crazy point like he puts all these skits up and he's funny and he's a stand-up comedian and stuff and he posts every day without fail at 9 a.m. he's on the the west coast here we're on we're in North Hollywood here uh, he posts every day at 9 a.m. and then he posts at 6 p.m. and he says and he says 9 a.m. because you know people are waking up here in LA and then in the East Coast they're on their lunch break and obviously 6 p.m. they're getting off work uh, here in LA and 9 p.m. they should already be off work and basically he treats his Instagram like a TV channel you know like tune into channel 5 every day blah 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 because I'm doing this this and this and basically all that to say is the algorithms of social media reward consistency I'm trying to get better at it uh, I'll be honest the last thing I want to do is you know when I'm working on a song is capture it and do a live stream and, and this and that but look the world is changing there's kind of no way around it I'm sure tons of people thought that this was gonna be a fad and it would go away but it's not um, people that have social media followings have have leverage you know like I'm taking uh, meetings with artists that you know they can get into these meetings because they have millions of subscribers like it's serious social currency so um, get on that if, if you haven't sorry completely digressed but just like how you can feed the algorithm of Instagram Facebook snapchat all that you can there are ways to feed the algorithm for Spotify so do some digging now on to potentially the scariest part label meetings when it's time to have a label meeting, make sure you're prepared. All of your I's are dotted and your T's are crossed. The first thing a record label is going to look at is social proof. What does your streaming look like? What do your socials look like? You can think of a record label as investors. They want to know that who they're going to get into business with is a solid investment. And the way that they check that is social proof. You know, if you have a bunch of streams, obviously it says a bunch of people like your music, and you have a bunch of, if you have a bunch of uh, followers on social media, it says people find you captivating, they find you interesting. Um, perhaps there are outlier situations where record labels are really developing talent, but for the most part, um, you know, artists are either developing themselves, and then they have connects, and they get these label meetings, or they're uh, they're working with a production team or you know they're working with someone like me that has a production team um, basically record labels want to get into business with and I say get into business purposefully because they want already want to know that you have stuff going on they don't want to babysit you through this process this isn't the 90s anymore um, you know they want to know that you're performing live they want to know that you're releasing music um, you know, one thing that might happen is you might have a label meeting and you might play three to five songs and, you know, they might say like, cool, come back in a few weeks with more songs, more songs, more songs, you know, and basically they, they're also checking to see that you're not just a, a flash in the pan. If you have three great songs, they want to know that you can keep making great songs that, you know, your, your talent hasn't tapped out. Like they want to know you're consistent before they invest in you. Um, I can't blame them for that. So as I was saying, here are some of the metrics that record labels check for uh, when they're vetting an artist that they might go into business with. Uh, like I said, make sure that your, your streaming is good. I, I would say above 100,000 is when you can start having, start showing it to record label people. You know, if you have a handful of songs that have over 100,000, if you're approaching a million plays cumulatively, that, that looks pretty good. Now if you have one or two or um, as many songs as you can possibly have with over a million streams now you have some some real leverage I have a friend who uh, I did some music with and uh, what really jump started him is he has a song that has over 20 million streams and he he can take meetings with whoever he wants 20 million streams everyone is 
uh, opening the door for you. So, and this isn't this isn't just uh, Spotify. One of the artists I work with a lot now, she has a really big YouTube following, and um, yeah, a few million on YouTube. Actually, I have two artists that have a few million on YouTube, and yeah, record labels they are um, they are into that. They want to see that. One of the key things. Besides sheer numbers, uh, record labels are wisening up. Well, they've been wise about this, and they look for engagement because it's so easy to buy followers. So, for instance, a red flag would be if you have, say, 30,000 followers, and each one of your posts gets 50 likes, that's a red flag. That is disproportionate. The engagement is disproportionate to how many followers you have. And, uh, they are not going to take you seriously. That's a, you know, it's a very uh, easy thing to see. So I'm not saying any of you are buying followers, but um, that is something that they're definitely looking out for. Here's another thing: if you have social media followers from other things besides music, leverage that by all means. Um, Meg, who you saw, who you met rather, in uh, the singing videos, she is she's you know very up and coming actress. Like she's been in a bunch of TV shows, been in a bunch of commercials. Um, so while we're developing her music, she's been acting for, for a couple years and she has a bunch of fans from that. So, um, you know, just express yourself because her fans in, uh, her fans from TV are gonna be delighted to find her music. Your fans will be fans of you regardless of how you're expressing yourself. So if you used to be an ice skater, you used to be in musical theater, you used to be a, a baseball player, I don't know. But yeah, use, use, that to your, use that to your advantage for sure. Record labels also like to see that you're out there performing your music. Because that's, that's social proof as well. If you're able to book shows all around your local scene and hopefully pack it out, that is, that's another metric that is saying to them, hey, people like uh, this artist's music. Also, since the consumption of music has uh, transitioned from buying to streaming, uh, really most of an artist's revenue comes from touring. So it's imperative that you have a really dope live show and you can bring people out to see you live because um, that's really, it's really where you're gonna make your money as an artist these days. The streaming does add up. I don't know if you've heard this metric before, but a million streams is I think it's $4,200. So if you have a song that has 300 million streams, I mean, that's that's pretty good money, but that's, you know, it's not like what it was when people were buying CDs. Like when, you know, 15 years ago when people were buying like Destiny's Child CDs, that was a lot of money. Um, you know, so you can still make money now, but uh, really touring is where it's at. So focus on your live show. Also, another strategy that uh, I see a lot of artists doing and that I've advised artists to do is if you book a show, book it at, you know, the dope venue in town and also hire a PR person to write about the show because whether it's a big show or not, they can really make it look like you're doing something. Excuse me. So, you know, if you do a live show at Hotel Cafe, which I've done with Meg, um, if you coordinate with a PR person, then they'll put a write-up in some magazines, do, uh, you know, get you on some really big blogs, all this kind of stuff. So then when you coordinate your label meeting for after that show, you can kind of have like a press package of, you know, here's my music, we did this live show, we packed it out, all this kind of stuff that looks really impressive to record labels. Here's a real gem for you. You're going into the record label. You have your songs that you want to show them on Spotify. Hey, got a few hundred thousand on these, these, and these. You know, awesome. Then I would advise you have some gems that you haven't released because uh, whatever you show to the record label, say you have your song um, that has the 20 million streams, like my friend, that's impressive to the record label, but the record label can't get into business with you on that song. You've already released it. So make sure you have songs that are the social proof, you know, that you've released and uh, 
you know, they show that people really like what you're doing, but also have the unreleased stuff because that's what they're gonna, that's what they can get into business with you on. You know what I'm saying? So the long and short of it is as an artist, uh, a record label sees you as a potential investment and they're gonna look to uh, certain metrics to kind of measure how valuable uh, you are right now and how valuable you, you could be. Obviously, you know, if they're gonna sign you or even continue talks with you, they see some level of potential in you, so that's great. Um, but I just wanted to arm you with what it is that they're looking for. Yeah, this is this is definitely what they look for. The social media is big. They want to know that you're performing. Basically, they want to know that you're your own self-autonomous thing without them. You've got to make these things happen, and then other people will come along the way, and they want to. They will augment what you're doing. They want to help you make more money so they can make money off of you. But if you're not already doing something, um, they don't. They don't want to baby you. Um, so it's kind of that. And honestly, if you meet with a record label and then they go cold on you, um, or an A and R just stops uh, and stops listening to your music, stops responding to your emails. Honestly, just find find more people to hear your music. All you need is one yes. And record labels can pass for a ton of reasons and they're, and they're never gonna tell you why. Like maybe you'll find out years later, but you know, it might be that you're too similar to one of their artists. It might be that they don't specialize in what you do so they have no idea how to even market you, you know? It could be that um, they were really gonna push you and then one of their bigger artists, um, one of their bigger artists got embroiled in some kind of scandal and now they have to figure out how to um, do damage control on that. You know, because honestly, at these record labels, there's usually one or two artists that are bringing in most of the money and they're kind of floating everything. Like Beyonce pretty much floats a ton of what goes on at her label just because she's making so much money or like an Ed Sheeran or a Taylor Swift, you know. So if something went down with them, they're going to focus on that. They're not really going to push like new artists. Whoever you're meeting at the record label, all they have is their opinion. Um, and tons of huge artists were passed up or passed on initially you know Ed Sheeran Jay-Z uh, Madonna all these artists who are iconic now were passed on initially so um, never let one person's opinion dictate your own self-worth if you know that you're making tremendous art eventually people will find that and uh, they will honor you for it so believe in yourself as things progress, it's very important that you hire legal representation. Hire a music lawyer or an entertainment lawyer, preferably a music lawyer. Um, don't hire your mom's friend who does malpractice or does criminal justice or something like that. Uh, a lawyer is not a lawyer is a lawyer. Um, it's all very different. So uh, be prepared and protect yourself. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my series, Recording Artist Explain. It was really fun to make this. Um, it was really fun to share this information with you all, and I, I hope it helps in some way. Um, if you'd like to work with me, please visit my website at www.bridgesconnectus.com or my Instagram at bridgesconnectus. I specialize in taking indie artists at all levels of development and priming them for record label signing. I write, produce, and mix here in my studio in Los Angeles, California, but I frequently travel internationally and domestically. Um, a few weeks ago, I was in the Cayman Islands um, developing an artist, and a few months before that, I was in South Africa for a month um, working on a pop album for an artist out there. We can work remotely over FaceTime or Skype. We can fly out. I can fly out to you. You can fly out to me. Technology is a beautiful thing. We can make it work regardless. Thanks for checking out this video series and be blessed.